All right, so welcome everyone. Um, again, this is a beginner Java course. Uh, the current plan is it will last until almost August, or maybe a little bit into August, depending on how quickly we go. Um, and by that point, you should have the absolute basics that you need to make your own Java applications. Uh, but not only just, oh, if I write this, this will happen, but also an understanding of why things are the way they are. Um, if we were to just go, oh, if you do this, then you get this, we could do that in like two weeks, no problem. But I want to make sure that you guys have a really solid understanding of how these things work so that you can go and make your own applications without any problems. Um, so we are we are Learn Teach Code. Uh, we're, our original group started up in Los Angeles and then moved here and I was like, that was fun, I wanna keep doing it. So we started it here. Um, and uh, this location is W Coding, which is run by this gentleman in the back. That's Alex. Um, we meet once a week uh, for each class, uh, and every all of our stuff is free. Uh, w Coding meets multiple times a week, and they're a programming school. You can pay to take classes there. So if that sounds interesting to you, like maybe we go too slow and you want to go faster, then you may want to talk to Alex or email W Coding if you want to go faster. Um, so the first thing I want to do today is get everyone set up on Slack, which is uh, the chat platform that we use. Because today I'm going to be sending you a lot of links uh, to like download stuff and configure stuff. So if you go to this web address, slack.learnteachcode.org, you'll see this page. Uh, if you put in your email address uh, or an email address you have access to, um, it will send you an email. You can click the link, make an account. And then in Slack, I will send you guys a bunch of links to go download things. Today, um, so there is that. And then, come on. There we go. No. Yes. And then today, we will be... Let's start with that. Yeah. And today we will be covering what is Java, what can we do with Java, how do we run it, installing it, setting things up, all that. So we're going to start with downloading all of the parts so that I can teach you things while that stuff is downloading. Okay? Nope, that's perfect. So once you've done that, go to your email, and then you'll have a, a link in your email. Uh, the reason it does that, Slack is an invite-only system. So the LA group built this app so that anyone could go get an invite rather than some administrator have to like get your email address and do the email, all that. You can just do it yourself. You cannot connect to the Wi-Fi. Have you tried really hard? <laughs> yeah, let me take a look. Do you know what uh, bands uh, what bands your router is broadcasting on? BNNG. Uh, okay, that one does BNNG. So. Has everyone made an account on Slack? Yes. Cool. And I'll catch when it works. So your it should look something. What? Okay. It should look something like this. I should do this. Okay. So your Slack should look something like this. Yeah. All these people joined. So for all our new people, you should join Java KR and or. 
English KR. Ah! And or Korean, if you speak Korean. Uh, so if you click these, you will join those channels. And I'm going to send you the links in there. Uh, so that, oh, where'd it go? Where's General? I'm going to send you links in the Java KR channel. And that way we don't bug everyone else. So there's like thousands of people. Not thousands. Almost 2,000 people on uh, this chat thing. And I'll show you how to keep it from giving you tons of notifications. But the nice part about this is those thousand people are in Los Angeles and they've been learning this stuff for a long time already. So if you have questions, you have a whole bunch of people you can ask for help. Yeah. Um, the Dash KR channels are just our group. And our group is mostly inexperienced people. We only have about five people who do software engineering for a living. So if you have uh, basic questions, most people in the KR channels can help. If you have more complicated questions, try the general channels, like just Java rather than Java KR. OK. Yep, so if you click, so if you click this, it will send you to the channel. Yep, this is this is for the soul group. Yep. And this is for our Java group. Okay? So now that you are here, I'm going to send you a link to where to download Java. Because then we don't have to do all sorts of fancy stuff. So, yay! Oh, another cool thing, if you want to get someone's attention, you can do at and then their name. And then that will tag them. Uh, also, Slack has a mobile app and a desktop app. This is actually the desktop app. And what you all are likely in is the web app. So if you want it on mobile, you can do that. But you should also configure your notifications. Um, you probably want to mute the general channel because that's all people in Los Angeles. And you don't want notifications in the middle of the night. Yeah. So if you go to the general channel again, it should be on the left. And up top here, if you click this little gear and you click mute, that will keep you from getting notifications. So that's good if you end up getting Slack on your phone. You don't have to get it on your phone, but if you want to, you can. Okay. Um, another nice thing about Slack, lots of software engineers use Slack because it has a lot of nice tools for programmers to share things. Um, and you have cool little emoticons, so I can do like, Yay! You have little reactions and things like that. Okay. Um, so, what I would like everyone to do is go to this link. Because you would not want to type all that. So go there. And you should have a page that looks like... If I could learn how to use a computer. Should look like this. Right? Ah! Including pop-ups. And, yeah, that's fine. You have cookies. I don't care. Everyone has cookies. Just go away. Um, now, these, first off, make sure you click Accept. Okay? And then, if you're on Windows, if you're on a 64-bit machine, you want this one. If you're on a 32-bit machine, like a tiny, tiny Windows computer, you may want this. If you're on, you're on Mac, you're going to grab this one. Okay? And once you get that started, then I'll explain what the hell we're doing. Okay? And give me a signal once you've got the download started. Oh, and there's another link. Uh, let's see. All right, a lot of people here have kind of tiny computers. So there's a couple of text editors that I like to use. One of them I really like, but it's heavy. So it's not good for computers with not a lot of power. So I'm going to send you guys a link to the lighter text editor, uh, which will be good for your laptops. Um, and it's very good for coding. So you'll want to download this as well. And I'm going to toss the link into here. And there you go. So you also want to download this. It looks like this. Okay. 
We may not get to using it today, um, but once you have it installed, it's less work we have to do later. Okay. Let's see. And uh, okay, no, we are we are going to use it today. So, all right. Has everyone started the downloads? Yes, 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 yes. No. <laughs> Getting there. Yep. All right. So now let's explain what the hell is going on. Uh. So disclaimer. Today I'm going to do a lot of talking. Today might be a little bit boring. In the future, there'll be a lot more coding. I promise. Okay. All right. So, um, Java. Why Java? Um, back in the olden days, you would have to get like a card, right? And the card had a whole bunch of like little dots in it, and you'd feed that. You'd punch in the dots, and then you'd feed that into the computer, and the computer would run your program. This is like in the '70s or '80s or something, right? Or '60s even. I don't know. Long time ago. That sucked, right? And there was only like maybe five of these computers in the world. Then they started making personal computers, right? You had assembly language, right? Which was telling the processor, the hardware in your computer, take this piece of data and move it here, and then do this to it, and then move it back here. And that was terrible because all the computers had different kinds of processors. So you had to write different code for each processor. It sucked. And then uh, they took the, uh, that, that was assembly language, and then they made a new language called C. You've probably heard of it. It's really popular today because it's still really good. Um, and C is really fast. And it could work for many kinds of processors, but only for certain operating systems. So if you wrote C for Windows, you couldn't take your program and then use it on Mac. That wouldn't work. You'd have to take your C code, put it on a Mac, change some things, and then do it for Mac or Linux or Unix or whatever, right? And that all sucked. I was like, I have to write, if I want everyone to be able to use my code, I have to write it five times. This sucks. So then people were like, well, I just want to write code once and I want it to run on everything. And then came Java, or rather, Java. Now, the way Java works is one of the reasons why in C you have to do different things for different computers is uh, the way a Windows machine opens up a file is inherently different from how a Mac opens up a file and Unix and Linux and all those, right? Um, so Java kind of wraps around all of that. So this is your computer. I am not an artist, but hopefully this looks okay. Right? This is your computer. Okay? Um, now again, like I said, if it's if it's Mac, ah, or if it's Windows, or if it's Linux, I was going to try to draw a penguin, but no. Um, you know, you have to do a different program for each one. But with Java, Java has what's called the JVM or a Java virtual machine. This is like a mini computer that runs inside your computer. So what happens is Oracle, though in the past it was Sun, this is just was a company that made the Java language and they created the JVM. Okay? Now they created a JVM for Mac. They created a JVM for Windows. They created a JVM for Linux and so on and so forth. That's why there's so many of these, okay? Um, but the fact that you have to write different code for each one of these, they did that work for us. We don't have to do that anymore. Now, we write an application specifically for the Java Virtual Machine, and it will work on all of these platforms. So if you write a program in Java, it'll work on Windows, it'll work on Linux, it'll work on Mac, no problem. Occasionally, there might be a small difference, but that's very rare. That's super advanced stuff. Don't worry about it. But this is why Java is a very popular language. Um, now, so that's that's why Java is Java. Okay. Now, there's a few more things. When um, remember earlier, I mentioned how back in the old times, like you would have to take a piece of data, 
move it between parts of the processor and do different operations, like that still happens, right? And the computer only understands that through these zeros and ones. Power, no power. Binary. Okay? Um, this is still the only thing that the computer understands. Okay? So when we write our Java code, the computer doesn't actually understand this. Or it doesn't understand our Java code. Sorry. It understands this. It doesn't understand our Java code. Okay? So we have to do an extra step. When we write our code, right? So this would be like our Java code, right? What happens is we need to send it to something called a compiler. Okay? We send our code to a compiler. Okay? This is just a very special piece of software. Okay? And you're actually installing it right now. And the compiler creates zeros and ones. Okay? Creates binary. And then we can run that in the JVM and run it on any computer. Okay? So this is the workflow that we live in. We are going to do this today. Okay? So we're going to write some sample Java code. We're going to write our first Java program today. We will then compile it. And then we'll take that compiled version and we'll run it in the JVM. All right? Is anyone terribly confused yet? It'll make a lot more sense when we actually start using these things. Okay? Uh, whose download is finished? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Cool. So, what's up? Oh, really? So, oh, I didn't start up my VM. I need to do that. So, um, we're going to have to do a little bit of back and forth, because some people have Windows, some people have Mac. Um, I kind of have both on here, so I'm going to teach you how to do both. I'm going to ask for your patience, where if you have Windows when I'm working with the Mac people, please be patient. If you have Mac, please be patient when I'm working with the Windows people. Um, only the initial setup. Um, actually, with Mac, you have almost no setup. Windows, we have to do a little bit of extra work. Okay. Uh, are, are all the Windows folks running Windows 10 or Windows 7 or 8? 10? 10? 10? 8? 7? 8? Damn it. Okay. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's still not terrible. All right. So if you're on Mac, most of the hard work is done. Okay. If you're on Windows, we need to do a little extra work. So you need to hit your Windows key. I can't show it on here because it's a second monitor. But in your Windows key, type hit your Windows key and type environment variables. And you should see edit the system environment variables. This should be similar on Windows 8. Edit it uh, should be ah. edit the system. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Can uh, can you type in Slack what it is in Korean? Oh, system. But uh, can you type it anyway just for the recording? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't think about that. Thank you for bringing that up. So if you're on Windows on uh, Korean, you'll want to type this, okay? And then that should bring up a window that looks like this, right? All the Windows people got this? Um, now at the bottom here, click this, this environment variables, okay? 
You should see some crazy thing like this. Windows problems. It's so much easier on Mac. Um, from there, you want this bottom section, the system variables. Hey. Uh, we're going to do two things. First, you want to hit new. Okay? You should see a window pop up like this. All right? In here, now you must type this exactly as I type it. Okay? Java. Yep, yep, yep. So you've got system properties. You cannot get there. All right, let's see. All right, so if you're at this page, you want to click environment variables. And then down at the bottom here, you want to click new. And then you must type java underscore home. Okay. Now, oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I'm sorry. So once you've got that done, if you hold the Windows key and hit E, it'll bring up a... Uh, It'll bring up a file explorer window like this, if you do Windows E, okay? I, I promise you, this is the most complicated part. Okay? Ah. Then from there, on the left, you want to go to your C drive. And you want to go to Program Files. And then you want to go to Java. Okay. You should see a folder like this. Your numbers might be slightly different because I need to update my Java. Oops. Go into this folder. And it should look something like this now. Right? Is everyone here? Okay. If you click up here, you'll get the path on your computer. I want you to copy this. It's Control-C. Or you can right-click and do copy. 
Okay. Now, I want you to paste that here. You can either right click and do paste, or you can do control V. V as in Victor. All right. It should paste the path there. Okay. Has everyone got that? Hit OK. That's step one. Now step two. You want to find this one called path. Okay. You want to click edit. On Windows 10, you'll get this really nice view. On Windows 8, you'll get one really long text box. Right? For Windows 8, at the very end, you want to do a semicolon, which is uh, this. That's a semicolon. And then you want to paste the path. Okay? Paste, uh, paste what we had copied. For, for people on Windows 10, you can just do new. And you can paste it. But you're not done yet. After you paste it, you need to do backslash B-I-N. What's that? Backslash B-I-N. It should be above your enter key. That one. Oh, uh, if you're on a if you're on a Korean locale computer, it'll do a it'll do a one symbol, but it's actually a backslash because Windows. <laughs> Windows, I have a love hate. Uh, no. This is this is this is a one time thing. You don't need to do this again. That would suck. Okay. So after you've done that, hit enter. Hit enter. Just hit, keep hitting OK, hit OK, and then you're good. Uh, uh, then one bin, B-I-N. Yeah, like this. Yep, and then, yep, just like that. And hit OK, and keep hitting OK, and hit OK. All right. So, is everyone caught up with that part? Yes. OK, now. Um... Now we are caught up to the Mac people. <laughs> All right, so Mac people, check back in. Now um, on Mac, you want to open up Terminal. Okay, uh, the way you can do this is using Spotlight. If you hit Command Spacebar and then type Terminal, it'll show up. On Windows, if you hold the Windows key and you press R, it'll bring up this little Run dialog. Okay. If you type CMD, hit Enter you'll get something that looks kind of like this. On Mac, it should look similar, right? Are you hacking now? No, it's not hacking yet. But it does look cool, all right? Um, now we need to test if what we did worked properly. You need to do Java C and hit enter. If you see a bunch of junk like this, you did good. If it says something like Java C not recognized, we need to do some work. Okay.
All right, so thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, was that me? Oh, okay, no, that's fine. I thought it was me. I was like, shit, no, not now. Um, so if you see this, good job. This is the compiler. Java C, the C is short for compiler. So this is what you'll use to turn your Java code that we're going to write soon into binary. Okay? Um, now, what I recommend you do is somewhere on your computer, you should create a folder. Okay? So I have a, I have a folder already called uh, L2CS Java. Nope, that's League of Legends. That is, in fact, not L2CS Java. If anyone wants to play League, you should tell me. Um, so I have this folder, and this is where all of my projects are. Okay, this is my Java programming folder. I recommend you do the same. Okay, and then within that folder, I recommend you make a folder for today's project. Each project should have its own folder. Okay, so the way this looks in the end is something... Oh, no, why did I use the red? Mistakes were made. It doesn't erase nicely. Um, so, like, ideally you should have some folder like this, and then maybe uh, some project folder like this. Okay? It doesn't have to be that. This is just an example. Um, you can, but I don't recommend it. Because if you're going to continue with this, you want to have a nice place where all of your stuff stays in one spot. Because C drive works. Yeah. Uh, anywhere, yeah. Put this anywhere. Oh, and what I also recommend doing is maybe do something like a zero, 01 intro. Okay? Because then your computer will sort it nicely. Okay? So make a folder. Now that was me. If you want to. Yeah. What, like a virtual drive? Why would we, what, why, what? Oh, no, we're not gonna partition today. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's an infrastructure thing. That's, there are other classes for that that we can do. But that is way outside the scope of Java. We're only doing this stuff today uh, because you need to in order to start writing Java, okay? So once you have some folder like this, you're going to come back to here, okay? So has everyone got their project folder set up? All right. Now I need to switch drives because I'm on a special setup. But actually, let's do this. There we go. Um, so today, I'm going to teach you a little bit of command line, okay? This is command line, also called terminal whatever. I'm going to teach you a little bit of this, of how to navigate around your computer. We're going to navigate to this folder. So that once we get here, we can use this. Okay? Um, now, at first, this is really scary. Like, what is it? What can it do? Am I going to break something? It's really hard to break stuff. Don't, don't be afraid. Okay? If you do something wrong, it'll complain at you. But it's highly unlikely that anything will be broken. All right? So I'm going to teach you navigation, okay? When you open up folders, okay, right? This is just a graphical way of navigating around your computer. This can do the same thing. This is just a textual way of navigating around your computer. Um, so right now, I'm in my D folder, my D root folder, okay? You're probably in your user folder, right? Um, now, you want to see what's in this folder so that you know how to get to where you want to be, right? You have to look around before you know which direction to walk. So on Windows, the command to see what's inside the current folder is D-I-R. On Mac, it's L-S, which I can also demonstrate in a second. So if you do this on Windows, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff. These are all of the things inside my D, D drive. Uh, and on Mac, 
It won't look exactly like this. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Okay. It should look something like this, right? Cool. Um, so yeah, that's Mac, that's Windows. Um, okay, so this is so this is how you see what's in here. Now, here are all my folders. Um, I know that this is my project folder. Okay, so I want to go into that folder because that's where I'm going to need to compile the files that I'm going to write. Okay, so make this a little smaller. So to change directories, it's actually a really easy one. It's CD to change directory, and then the name of the directory you want to go into. In this case, this is the name of the directory I want to go into. Yep. So if I do that, you'll see that my prompt changes. Okay, that means I'm currently inside that folder. So that's how to go into a folder, okay? Um, give me just a second and I'll show you how to get there. Now, this prompt tells me, on Mac it might only tell you the last folder you're in. So if you want, ooh, is it, I don't remember. I know it on Mac, I don't remember on Windows, we're gonna find out. Uh, to see where you currently are, you can do PWD, which is present working directory. On Windows, I think it's, oh crap. Or on Windows, you don't need to. Because Windows just has the path right here, okay? On Mac, you can do PWD to see what your current path is, okay? So, you see here, I just have a tilde. I don't know what that means. So if I do PWD, ah, this is where I am. Home slash the beach. It's going to look slightly different because this actually isn't Mac, but whatever. Uh, so, in this case, just PWD will show where I currently am. CD is to like take a step somewhere, okay, to go into a folder. Um, so that's how you go into a folder. What if I want to go back up a folder? So I want, I went down into L2CS Java, but maybe I want to go back up into D. Yes, very good. You can do CD space dot dot, it means go up a folder. Now you see how my prompt went from L2CS Java back to just D. Okay, so now what's happening here is you're actually in C users, your username. So because it's in your C drive, you need to go back up to C. So you can do CD space dot dot. And now you'll see you're at C users. If you do CD space dot dot again, now you're in your C directory. Now if you do DIR, yeah. What's up?
don't know if you have any over to go into their home. Do this and maybe you have a TV like that. So there is a way. Thank you for your patience, everyone, and thank you to you guys for helping, and Alex, because that makes everything a lot easier. Um, so you should be... Ah. Wait, did I make a folder for today? I don't even remember. Let's find out. Uh... I'm going to make a folder. Uh, what, is what is it? May? May intro. Cool. All right, empty folder. Good. All right, so... Whatever you do, don't close this terminal. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to navigate again. Now, granted, it actually wouldn't be bad practice. You should probably get a little comfortable with navigating on command line. Um, but for now, try not to close it. Otherwise, we have to figure it all out again. Okay? Um, so, now we've laid down all the groundwork to write our first Java program. Okay? So, if you're at this point, open up Sublime Text. It should look something like this, without all this code. Give me a second to get rid of all this. Ah, go away! Go away! Go away! Okay. Uh, uh. There we go. Okay, it should look something like this. Right? Yes, everyone's got Sublime open. Now, um, the really easy way to do this is, uh, again, this is, we're not really going to use this part today, but I want to teach you guys how to do this. So at the top, go to Project, and then Open Project. Okay? And then navigate to wherever your project folder is. So in this case, it's in my D directory, or D partition, LTC Java. 
and what I call it, May Intro? May Intro. Once you're there, hit Open. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Sublime works different than other things. Sorry. You don't want to do Open Project. You want to do Add Folder to Project. Sorry about that. Then, navigate to D, L2CS Java, or whatever your project folder, or your whatever your workspace folder is, then your project folder, and then hit select folder. And then on the left, you should see the uh, your project folder, and then nothing. Okay, is everyone here? Good. Now, do control, well, there's two ways you can do this, or there's control N for new file, or you can do file, new file, or you can right click here and do new file. Doesn't matter, okay? So get a new file. You can tell it's a new file because you'll see this tab up at the top here, okay? Because this allows you to edit many files at once. Just like in a browser, you can view many websites at once. Similar idea. And then I want you to do file, save, okay? Now the nice part, since we set up that project folder, we're already in that project folder when we hit save. Now, type this exactly as I type it, okay? I want you to do hello world dot java with a capital H and a capital W. So it should look like this. and then hit enter. You'll see it pop up on the left side there, okay? We're now gonna write our first program. Now, I'm gonna take a break for a second. Why did we do all of this, okay? Um, so the first thing we did was edit the system environment variables, okay? Um, command line has a whole bunch of commands you can use, like CD or DIR or LS or all these sorts of things, right? Um, all these commands, they're not magic, right? Each of those commands is actually a file somewhere on your computer. And when you say CD, your computer looks for that file and then runs it, okay? So those are cd.exe is a file, or on Mac it's probably just CD, because Mac doesn't need file extensions because it's smart. Um, but, uh, but Java C, right, our Java compiler, which we installed, is not with all of those other files. It's somewhere else on our computer. Now, the path, when we were editing our system environment variables, the path is all of the folders on your computer where a terminal looks for files to run. Right. So when we do the Java C command, by adding that folder to the path, when it's looking for the Java C file, it's like, oh, let me look in this folder. Oh, there's a file. Let's use that. Okay? So by editing the system environment variables for our Windows folks, um, we told our command line, hey, this folder is where possible files I may want to run exist, including Java C. We didn't have to do that on Mac because I guess Oracle likes Mac people more. They just did, it. They just did that part for us. Okay? So when you type Java C, it looks somewhere on your computer in one of the path folders and finds that and then runs it. Okay, so that's our compiler. Now, we created our project folder just to keep things nice and organized. Um, and because I want to have a nice isolated environment so that I can show you when certain things happen because we're going to mess with files on the computer. Okay. Um, and now we're using Sublime Text because we need what's called a plain text editor. Right? If you use something like Microsoft Word or text edit, edit bleh, those are rich text editors. What that means is when you're typing into those, you're, it's not only saving the text you're typing. There's a whole bunch of other data that it's saving into the file. Okay? So if you're trying to write code and you have all that extra data and then you send it to the compiler, the compiler's going to be like, what is all this extra stuff? Boom! It doesn't know what's happening. If you have a plain text editor, only the text that you type goes into the file. Okay, uh, so that's one of the reasons we use Sublime. Another reason is that 
it will actually change the colors of your text for you so that it's easier to read. At first, you're like, oh, why? But on like week three or four, you'll be like, oh, yes, I like the colors. Okay? Um, and now, Hello World is a tradition. Um, whenever programmers are setting up a new environment, a new language, the first program you run is Hello World. It's a way to prove that your environment is set up properly and you're capable of running programs successfully. So once you've done that, then you can just focus on writing code. You don't need to worry about your special environment or anything. You've already set it up. Just start writing code. Okay. Any questions so far? I usually wait a while for questions because sometimes people need a minute to think of a question. Everyone looks so, yeah, pretty good. So, any, any plain text editor can use? Say one more time? Any plain text editor can use? Yes, any plain text editor you can use. So, Windows actually has a plain text editor. Notepad is a plain text editor. Notepad's just really painful to write in. Yeah. <laughs> so, we don't use it. Um, Sublime, you'll find, actually does a lot of stuff for us, which makes writing code much, much faster. Okay? And later, we'll go from just a text editor to a full integrated development environment, which does a whole bunch of stuff for you. But when you're just starting out, it can be kind of confusing. So like we're just going to start with this. Huh? Like exactly. Yes. Eclipse is an integrated development environment. I just realized I had pulled out my headset at some point. I hope the recording's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So now we're going to write our first Java program. Okay. Now I need you to type exactly as I type it. Okay. We're doing really good on time. So let me make sure we've covered everything real quick. Because if we're doing that good on time, I'm worried that we missed something. Oh, we didn't cover what we can do with Java. We'll do that at the end, because that makes more sense anyway. We installed Java, we set environment variables, we did command line. We are way ahead of schedule. Awesome. Okay. So, all right. Let's write our first Java program. Now, you want to make sure your keyboard is in English. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. So you want to do class. Ooh, did I save? Why is it not? Yeah, it does it automatically if we change the file extension to Java. Okay, I'll just be patient. And then, hello, there we go. Look at the pretty colors. Actually, sorry, we want public class. Well, yeah, let's do, let's just, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then, ah, typing is hard. Yep, I know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, I know. Uh, that's, uh, that's actually just a styling thing. The white space doesn't matter. Um, I use tab, but whatever you want. Uh, in Java, generally, white space does not matter. Doesn't matter if you have a space or a tab or 20 tabs. It doesn't matter. In Python it does, but Java does not care. Okay. So, except the white space, you should have something that's like this. Now, if you do, uh, the cool part about Sublime is that if you do like a curly bracket like that, and then you hit enter, it'll tab for you. That's one of the reasons we use Sublime, because it makes life a little easier for us. Okay? Give me a signal once you have this. Okay. I know this is super confusing but we'll explain it once we can prove it works, okay? We'll probably spend the rest of the class just focusing on this. Okay, so you guys, you guys are done? You're done, you're done, 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 done? Good, all right. Now, let's make, let's see if this runs. Let's run our first Java program. 
So go back to your command line. Okay, You should be in this folder already. Windows, if you do DIR, Mac, if you do LS, you should see your hello world.java. Right? Good, good, good. Good. All right. Now. Yeah. Nope. Oh, almost. All right. Okay. So, now, this is our Java file. Yes, the compiler. Does anyone remember what the compiler is? What we called it? Yep, but there was something we did on command line that we were checking for. Does anyone remember? It's okay if not. Java C. Java C for Java compiler. Okay, so we're going to do that step now. Java C space, then the name of this file. Now, cool part, I don't want to type that whole damn thing. Also, if I try to type it, I'm more likely to make a mistake. Okay, so if you just type the first few characters, and then you hit tab, it'll finish it for you. So fancy. Okay, so now if you do that and you hit enter, it looks like nothing happens, right? Here's the thing. Many command line applications, many command line utilities, unless their purpose is to give you information, if their purpose is to take an action, if their only purpose is to take some action, and you run it, and then nothing happens, generally, that means the action was successful. Things are generally quiet when things are okay. Like, when you're sitting next to your friend, they're not always going to turn to you and be like, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's annoying, right? Um, now, if we did something wrong, like if I did something like this, if I give it a wrong file, then it's going to do all sorts of complaining, right? But when things are okay, it's generally quiet, okay? So we did this, and it worked, right? It was silent, so everything should be okay. So what happened? Oh, no, not okay? Okay. No. Yeah. Uh, oh. no. Okay. All right. So, what likely happened is there's something wrong with the code here. Uh -huh. Hello world. So, at this point, everyone's is working. Everything's good. But what happened? What does the compiler do? Do you remember? Yeah. Translates it into zeros and ones, into binary. Uh, this is stored in another file. This file. This file was not here before we ran the compiler. The compiler created this file. This hello world.class. Okay. Now, if you look in your in Sublime, that file's not there. Okay, there's a reason for that. You don't want to read binary. You can't read binary. It's a bunch of zeros and ones. So Sublime tries to be nice and is like, eh, you don't care about binary files because you can't read them. So it doesn't even show them. However, if we do either Control O or if we do File Open, you'll see Hello World class. And if you try to open this. That's binary. Now, it's written in hex, but the data is actually binary. It's just representing it as hexadecimal, but whatever. 
this is your Java program. After it's been translated. Okay? Just curious, why is there a cafe? Yeah. Ah, so, um, zeros and ones, uh, they're actually just ways of representing numbers. Um, so you can represent all of the numbers with zeros and ones, the same as you can zero through nine. Um, what we were seeing before, this is, so binary is a base two number system. You only have two numbers, zero and one, right? Um, this is hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a base 16 system. So for us to read it, we use zero through nine, so that's 10 numbers, and then A, B, C, D, E, F for 16. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so zero through nine, A through F. That's hexadecimal. So, uh, cafe B is just a coincidence? Yeah. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, it's just a coincidence. That is really funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's the thing. So now... Oh, yeah. I, I just put class. Mm. My, um, I didn't put properly class. Uh, I don't remember. Let's try it, see what happens. Um. <laughs> the worst case is the program doesn't work, we add public and then it'll work. Uh, it should work without it, maybe? I, I don't remember. It's been a long time. Let's find out. Alright, so we, we wrote this part, we ran this part, we see this, now let's run our first program. Okay? So Java C is to compile. What's up? Let me see. Oh. Okay, so first off, uh, what is it on Windows? Yes. Oh, what? What? Hey, I've seen it a lot. Sale? No? 
<laughs> so, <laughs> developer assumptions. Um, you'll find that uh, oftentimes I'll forget to tell you to save files. Because as a developer, you learn to save every 30 seconds. You save. You always hit save. You always, always, always hit save. So if you, if you do Java C, hello world.java, right? And then there's no class file. Right? It's possible that maybe you wrote this code, but you didn't save it. So when you try to tell the Java compiler to compile the file, it's an empty file. So it doesn't do anything. Right? Um, so make sure you hit save, then run the compiler, then check that you see your class file. Okay? Yeah. Still no? Oh boy. Oh, you need to compile it again. So ls only shows you. Yep, so that's right. So ls only shows you what's in the directory, right? So what had happened was you've written, written all that text in the file, and then you tried to compile it, but you didn't save it. So there was no text in the file. So the compiler saw it. It's like, oh, it's nothing to do. Then you did ls, and you didn't see the class file because the Java compiler didn't create anything. Then you save the file. You did it ls again. It showed the file, but you didn't compile it yet. The Java compiler is what creates the class file. So now when we did this, it created the class file. And then when we did ls, then it showed up. Does that make sense? Alright. Now, is everyone is everyone to this point? Good? Good? Alright. Now. So at this point everyone has this. Now let's run it. Java C is compile. Can anyone take a guess at how to run Java? Java? Yes. So you just do Java. And now here's the thing. You just do the name of the class file without the class. Okay, so just do Java space hello world. Your case must match. Must be a cap If you did a capital H in your file, it must be a capital H here. If you did a lowercase h, it must also be a lowercase h. Okay? And you should see a print, hello world. Good. Congratulations, you've run your first Java program. Okay. Now what the hell did we just do? <laughs> All right. So, this looks familiar, right? This is a function, okay, or a method. The two words are generally the same. If I say function or I say method, usually I mean the same thing, okay? Um, a method just does an action. It does something, okay? In this case, the print line function, print ln, ln short for line, uh, prints whatever is here to the console or to the terminal or the command line, whatever you want to call it, okay? So that's why when we ran our program, you see hello world, okay? Because we told it to, okay? So that's what this part does. This is a function, okay? Um, this is what's called a parameter. It's an input to a function. It's data that we give to the function so that it can do its action, okay? In this case, the print line function We'll print to the screen whatever data you give to it as a parameter or an input. Okay. Uh, now, why quotes? Quotes indicate that this is text data, right? If we do just this, this is a function, right? If we were to type hello world without the quotes, 
it would try to treat it as a function or a variable or something. But we don't want that. To us, it's just data. Okay. Oh, geez. Typing is hard. Ah! Oh my god, it's still hard. Okay. Nope. There we go. Alright. So that's this part. Okay. Um, inputs go between parentheses. Okay. If we want to do multiple inputs, we do a comma and then we can do multiple things. But print line only accepts one input. So no commas. Okay. Semicolon means that we have finished this statement. Okay? You need to have semicolons. You will learn to hate semicolons because you will always forget them. But that's okay. You'll get used to it. Um, why do we need semicolons to tell it that the statement is complete? Because we could do multiple statements on a line. So we could do... Because there's semicolons between each, we don't need a new line. Okay? Uh, you, I have a question. Yeah. What happened if you didn't use a semicolon? It would complain. So if I did just this, no semicolon? Semicolon expected. Okay? Yeah. So basically, it's a period to Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. It is a little bit confusing. Um, at first, it's like, oh, all this stuff to memorize. But once you start writing more code, it becomes natural. I have changed the uh, world to other different words, but it is not yep. showing up. Correct. So, this is your class definition. Okay? I'm not going to go too deep into what a class is. Um, at a, at a high level, a class is a way to define a category. So you can say, like, a class of car would be like sedan, right? Or a class of building would be like skyscrapers versus apartments versus houses or whatever, right? Um, we are defining a class of things in code, okay? That's what class generally means. Right now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so put it in the back of your mind. But this, hello world, is the name of the class. Okay. Generally, it's one class in one file. There are exceptions. You can put multiple classes in a file in certain cases, but generally, one class, one file. Java enforces that. The name of your class must match the name of your file. That's why I was telling you to type it exactly as I typed. Okay. And it is case sensitive. A capital H is very different from a lowercase h. Okay? The same with your commands, right? This is a capital S, just like we saw earlier. A capital S is very different from a lowercase s. Okay? So that is why this is the way it is and why you would be encountering the problem that you have. Now, if you made sure that your class name and your file name were exactly the same, it should work. So try it and let me know if it works. Is it case sensitive to? Yes. Okay. It is case sensitive. Hmm? What, why, when I try to code in Eclipse, I write class, for example, I just put the name of the class Java and I system out print the land, for example, uh, hey guys, it prints out hmm. in Eclipse. It shows it. Eclipse does a lot of. So there's a few things going on there. One, Eclipse. Eclipse uh, has its own compiler that it will do. It's a little more forgiving than the normal Java compiler. So that's one thing. Um, but that may not be the behavior you're seeing. Uh, it could be that um, Eclipse also does a lot of hand-holding. It will fix things for you. So it's possible that it was just fixing it for you and not having you worry about it. Okay? Um... That's, that's why I start out teaching people in a plain text editor first. You need to know how it works and why it works. Because there might be a day where 
you're not on your own laptop. Maybe you're on someone else's laptop, but you need to make a small program. You don't want to install Eclipse. That would take forever. You just want to write a simple Java program a lot faster. Okay. But Eclipse would do a lot of handholding. So if you did it without Eclipse, you would end up writing bad code because Eclipse would fix a lot of stuff for you. Uh, now, I'm not saying things like Eclipse are bad. I use IntelliJ, which is similar. I use IntelliJ every day. I love IntelliJ. It's wonderful. But I still remember how to do this. I can write plenty of Java code without a development environment. All right? And I want to make sure you guys can also do that. So that's why we're using a plain text editor. Okay? I could not do it this Really? Let me take a look. Just see. No, it has to match. This is a magic. Your file name and your class name have to match. Then I have to change the class name and yep. the file name. Yep. And then I get what I want. Correct. Now, if you do a rename in Eclipse, it will rename the file for you. Because Eclipse knows it won't won't run if you don't do that. Okay? So that's why that. Um, now, uh, the system part. System is referencing a special object. So uh, Java... Give me a second to clean this up here. I should have unraveled my headset before I started recording, because now my range is much shorter. Um, Java is what's called an object-oriented language. Okay. Back in the days of C, or I guess still today in C, because C hasn't really changed terribly much, um, you would just write code, and it would just execute straight. And then you might have a function that you could call multiple times, but it would just execute straight. Okay? It's pretty, pretty basic, straightforward. But it makes doing things multiple times, and in slightly different ways, a little more work. You end up having a lot of repeated code, and that's not good. Um, Java, it's what's called object-oriented. You'll see this OOP very often. OOP is short for object-oriented programming. Java is like one of the top object-oriented programming languages in terms of popularity. In terms of efficiency and ease of use, maybe not. But in terms of, it is one of the most popular object-oriented languages. Now, um, system is an object. Okay. Remember how I said earlier that Hello World is a class? It's a class of things, right? System is an object made from that class. And what do I mean by that? You can think of a class like a blueprint, right? It defines how, some, how something would behave, how it should look, how it should act. Um, the object is the building made from that blueprint, okay? So if we had more code elsewhere, we could create a hello world object if we wanted to, okay? Um, but right now we're just defining the blueprint for hello world. And then Java itself is creating the object for us and doing all sorts of fancy stuff, okay? Now, why all of that? System is an object. It is a global object. Or, I'm sorry, that's completely wrong. System is not an object. System is a class. Um, it's a uh, it's um, no the system itself is static. Out is static. Yeah, um, but we're not going to cover static because that would confuse the hell out of you. But uh, the system class has a child object called out. Out is the output to your console. Okay. And then, so, so out effectively represents this. Yes, it is your output, your standard output. And um, so the way that objects work, or classes work, or either really works, is you have your object, and then you can do a dot to access something inside that object, whether it's another object or a function or anything like that. So in this case, out is actually a child of object. And then out has a child called print line. Okay? But in this case, in code, we just write it like this. Okay. So system has an out object, 
and then the out object has a print line function, and that's what we're using. Okay, so this prints to our standard output. We could also print to error. System also has an error um, object. At least, I'm pretty sure it does. It's been a long time. Let's find out. Oh, oh, whoops. Didn't put our semicolon back. It looks the same, but that's because uh, this is not a fancy editor. If this was a fancy editor, it would be in red, because error is usually represented in red. But because the Windows command prompt sucks, it's in white, because everything's in white, because Windows. Um, I could... Actually, you know what? Let's get fancy real quick. Actually, where's my temp folder? Do I have a temp folder? I think I have a temp folder. Yep, yes I do. God, I miss having sublime. Okay. still green. Screw you, CentOS. Okay. Arr. But, take my word for it. Error is your error output. <laughs> that makes me really sad. Alright, whatever. Damn it. Thought I was going to be cool. Instead, I'm just a liar. Um, so, system has your out, and it has error, if you want to print out to the screen. Um... So that's that. So we covered this line, we've covered that line. Now this. This is a mess. But you need to memorize this. It sucks, but you need to memorize this. Um, this is a special function. When you write a Java program and you tell or when you write some class file and you tell Java run this file, this is the function that it runs. And it must look like this. Yes. If you want your program to actually run. Yeah. Um, now, there are um, many Java libraries out there where they're not intended to be run directly. They're, us they're usually incorporated into another program. And in those cases, you wouldn't have this because they're not meant to be run directly. But if you are writing a program that is meant to be executed by the user or by some system, you need this function. Okay? You should memorize this, okay? Um, so, we are really good on time. Um, I mentioned earlier that print line is a function. This is an example of using a function. This is defining a function. We are creating our own function, and it's being called main. And when we tell Java to run this, it looks for a function called main, okay? So this is the name of the function. Similar to how this is the input in between the parentheses, we're saying that our function takes in an input. Okay? In this case, the input is args. Okay? That's just the name we give it. This part can actually change. You can make this part anything. You can call it monkeys. It doesn't matter. This is just the name of the input. Okay? But this part is important. String in Java, is what we call text. Okay, So when you think text, when you think words, you should think string. This is actually a string. Okay, And then this part is, oh, you know what, I should be doing, okay, so this is args, this is string, because the recording can't see my hands. Um, this part, these brackets, mean an array. Okay, An array is a structure where you can store multiple objects of the same type. So args actually contains many strings. Okay, that's what this part thing means. It, it's a structure that can store many of something. Okay. So why 
is this our input? Why is our input a series of strings? Because when you run something on command line, you can do something like You can do something like that, right? And each of these would actually be in that string collection. And you could access them in your program and do stuff with them. Okay? We're not going to cover that today because it would be a mess. Well, I could, I could demonstrate it. I wouldn't expect you to. Yeah, let's demonstrate it. I don't expect you to memorize this part. We're going to cover arrays later. <laughs> but just to demonstrate, uh, No, 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 yes. Okay. So each of these was stored in that collection. And then I looped through each word in that collection and I printed it. Okay. Don't worry about this too much. We're going to cover it in greater detail later. Okay. Um, so that's what this part is. What is this? Not today. <laughs> that's really complicated. We're not covering that today. Okay? Um, any questions about this part so far? Yeah. Just, you know, the, the words the pink yes. The left, yep. And those are just mandatory words that we have to type, right? Yes. Uh, later I'll explain better what they mean, but I don't want to give you guys, I've already given you guys a lot of information. I don't want to overload you. Okay. Um, so we start, if we start from the beginning, class is uh, just uh, like a class, uh, the, the beginning class of objects. Mm -hmm. The public static word main is the method, how we show or how we act with the object. Mm -hmm. System is the object. And out print ln is the action that uh, object does. At a very high, slightly inaccurate level, yes. Uh, system is a global class. Out is an object in that class. Print line is a function on that object. That's a little confusing right now. It'll make a lot more sense once we actually cover methods and objects. We are going to have classes dedicated to those things. So don't worry too much about the details. What I really want you to get out of today is A, you have your Java environment set up. You don't need to do that again, unless you use a different computer. Um, B, you know how to compile a Java file. Okay. C, you know how to define a class. And D, you know this method. You know this special method. Okay. That's all I want you guys to know for today. And one more thing, one more thing, one more easy, helpful thing. This is really confusing. There will be days when you see code that is really confusing. There are ways to make it not so confusing. Um, in our code, we can write something called comments. Comments is text in this file that Java ignores. So you can use it to take notes. So what I want everyone to do right now is to take notes by using a comment. So there's two ways you can do comments. You can do two slashes, two forward slashes, the one next to your right shift. Okay, that's a forward slash. And this is a single line comment. Okay. That will be ignored by Java. Sublime text co colors it in at kind of a dark gray so that that's very clear. Okay. There's also a multi-line comment. If you do slash star, which is shift eight, and then if you do star slash, everything in between will also be ignored.
Okay. So, what I would like you guys to do, take five minutes, and take notes on what we've covered today. We'll do that for five minutes, all right? Then we'll do general questions, and then we'll cover what Java is used for, okay? How you can use it, and the sorts of things we'll be covering in the rest of this course. So take some time and take some notes. stuff that every Java developer should know. Like if you, um, the reason I teach you this stuff is I don't want you to be called what, what they call a code monkey. A code monkey is someone who just writes code. And they don't necessarily understand what they're doing or why. There's lots and lots of code monkeys. They're very annoying. I don't want to make you guys code monkeys. I want you guys to understand what things are, how they work, why they work. And being able to understand the underpinnings of things also lets you know how you can kind of break them. So later on, once we get more into like how specific Java stuff works. So you are preparing us for being <laughs> We could go there. <laughs> but uh, more like to give you the foundational knowledge where if you wanted to be a hacker, you could. But no, no, no. We're not going to do any stack overflows or anything like that. No, no. going to do a calculator at one point. Spend one class building a calculator. Now, with my experience, I could probably build this calculator in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Really? 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, that's that's with me not having memorized exactly how Scanner works. Like, I'd have to go look up what it, what is the method called on Scanner? Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. But if I if I already knew exactly how Scanner works, maybe five minutes. Really? Yeah. So that if you're really familiar with the problem space already, there's there's kind of two things. Do you mm -hmm. truly understand the problem you're trying to solve? And then do you truly understand the technologies you're using to solve it? If you, if you have deep knowledge of both of those things, you can do things really fast. But usually, you don't have perfect, perfect knowledge of both. Usually you have a lot of knowledge in one and some knowledge in the other. And a lot of your time will be actually figuring out the rest of your knowledge, so then you can build it. Um, programming. Taking much longer. Much longer, right? Yeah. Minecraft was actually based on another game. Really? Yes. That was abandoned. The original game was abandoned, um, but the Notch, the guy who made Minecraft, was like, why was this abandoned? This is awesome. So he knew exactly how that game worked. So his knowledge in the problem space was very high, because there was something else exactly like what he wanted to build. So he took that and he rebuilt it in Java, which he had a strong understanding of, so he could build it very quickly. And then he added to it, which, and then he was increasing the size of his problem space because he was adding things to it. So he had to learn things about 
how to solve the problems that you're trying to solve. Yeah. Okay, so public class Hello World is defining my class, right? So does Hello World become my class? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Another couple minutes for people to take notes. Oh, I get to talk about the cool things. I actually tried to make a game in Java in uh, college, and we got really close. The game was almost code complete, right. but our artists left. We had two artists, and they both left. So no game. We were super sad. Uh, they just had, they were too busy with class. So they couldn't finish the product project. And then it was also like, it wasn't for our classes. It was an extra thing. So that kind of made us really sad. And so we lost motivation. So we never finished the project. And this is before we learned about things like source control. So that code is gone with the laptops that we wrote it on. So why do you have to put dog and persistent dog on dog? So that's accessing the objects inside the previous oh, okay. object. So out is an object inside system. Right, and then print line is inside. Um, you got it. There are, there are lots of classes like system. Yes, there are many. And you'll learn how to write your own too. Oh, you can actually write your own class like mm -hmm. system. Um, I have heard it takes several weeks to understand the Java and several million years to understand all the libraries it has. We're not going to cover all of the Java libraries. That is not reasonable. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's even a single person in this world that knows all of the Java libraries. Really? It's too much. That's, 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 because like every coder can create his own library, right? Mm -hmm. That is the so there's, there's, ah, so there's, there are many Java libraries out there, but then Java has its standard library built standard into it. Library. And even the standard library is huge. Really? It is massive. It is giant. Um, but, mm, so uh, something like system, we didn't write system. System is some code that's already there that we can just use. System is part of a library. A library is a collection of code that you can just use to accomplish other things. Yeah. So there's like web server libraries, and there's database libraries, and there's uh, physics libraries, and graphics libraries, and all sorts of things. So like, how, uh, I just like, I think I understand the basics of the Yama. Mm. So like, for example, learning Yama is the this kind of teaching is uh, really tough, but I would love to learn it. Mm. Create a project that mm. I want to do, mm. but I don't know how to access all the libraries mm. how to like pick up. Uh, okay, if I want to make this application work like this, mm. I would put this library, this code. So, um, or something like that. Uh, that would fall under intermediate. Really? Yes, and uh, in about two weeks, I'm going to restart the intermediate class. The previous intermediate class died because I had a family illness and I had to go back to the U.S. for two weeks. And then after that, I had already planned a Japan trip. I was like, I'm not just going to throw that money away, so I went on the Japan trip. And that was three weeks without Java class. And the group had also found out that the project they wanted to do, someone had built it already, so a lot of people lost their motivation and didn't come again. So between all of those things, the class just kind of died. But we're going to start a new intermediate Java class in two weeks. Um, and you're welcome to join that, if you have some Java knowledge already. Um, if there's some things that you're missing, um, it might be a challenge getting some things to work. But if you have time and motivation, why not? Mm. So if I write this um, saying hello world code mm. um, in Notepad, and then save it as .java and then it's going to work fine? Yep. Um, what about just like Word? No. no, Word. Word would not do it. 
uh, if you actually open a Word file, it has a lot more data in it. It, it also like, puts on the graphic? Yeah. It's, the it's, a, it's a rich text editor. Um, so it does all of the formatting and stuff, it automatically puts into the file. So if you were to, let me see if I have a Word file on here. So for, for rich for rich text files versus, um, versus uh, let's actually do this over here because I have no idea what's on my file system. But I kind of don't get it because um, isn't that we're saying the same um, exact things? Mm. So byte size mm -hmm. the same. If you save it in Word? Yeah, because uh, one English alphabet letter is yes. one byte. Right, but Word doesn't just save the text that you write in it. It creates a whole bunch of other data that it saves into the file too. So your Word file should be larger than a plain text file. I'm trying to find. I don't use Microsoft Word, so I'm trying to find a a Word file on my computer. Uh, I gotta have one somewhere. Oh, you know, what? it'd be in my Google Drive folder. Uh, hey, there's a docx. This is a Word file. Not quite what you expected, is it? What's this? Oh, no, that's just a bunch of blank space. So, Word files are not plain text. So, don't write your code in Word. You will not be happy. <laughs> okay. So, technically, it is impossible. It's certainly not reasonable. <laughs> you could do something crazy and write your own compiler that parses binary word documents, converts it to plain text, extracts the code, and then compiles the code. Uh, so no, 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 you don't want to do that. <laughs> so. Okay, is everyone good with their notes? Okay, so um, now that you've had a taste of what it's like to write Java, why the hell would you want to write Java? Well. Uh, the old Java installer had a, had a very interesting selling point. Over 3 billion devices are running Java right now. So if you're looking for a job and you know Java, it might be a little easier than if you knew some more esoteric programming language like Erlang. Now granted, Erlang is an amazing language, but it's not very popular compared to Java. Um, but then what can you build with Java? Lots of ATMs running Java. Right? ATM, automated teller machine. Yeah, a lot of those are running Java. Do you have an Android phone? Guess what that's running? Java. Um, someone, I know someone here recognizes League of Legends because they laughed when I mentioned. You know what a lot of their servers are written in? Java. Not the game servers. The game servers are in C++. Er, yeah, yeah, C++. Um, but things like the store, the website, all those things, Java. Actually, the, I think they changed the website to, um, or the store was in PHP. A lot of the backend services are in Java, like their member system, um, their champion system, their champion select system, all those sorts of things. That's all Java. Um, Minecraft, Java. Um, basically, there's a lot of shit written in Java. And then uh, Java is also very, very popular among large companies because the nice part about I erased it. Uh, Object-oriented languages is that it's really easy to kind of like contain certain aspects of your product separately. So you can say, hey team, you're responsible for this category, damn it, this category of objects. Oh, hey other team, you're responsible for this category of objects. And then they can work on things mostly separately. I mean, they still need to talk because the objects might communicate with each other a bit, but it allows for easy, easier separation of things. Um, we mentioned the cross-platform thing earlier. That's really popular. Um, another thing about object-oriented programming is that many programs are really just simulating things in the real world, right? So if you had, um, there are ERP systems, which are uh, systems for logistics and shipping, and they will have objects called package, conveyor belt, shelf, right? And using an object-oriented language, it's really easy to represent these real-world things in code. So that's another reason why Java is popular. Um, and Java performs pretty well. I mean, C and C++ will always perform much, much, much faster, right? Um, because you do memory management 
Uh, oh, that's a good point, too. Uh, in languages like C and C++, if you create some data, you have to tell the computer, hey, I want to take up this much space in memory, and then I'm going to put my object there. Right? In Java, you just say, hey, I want to make a new object. And the computer's like, yeah, okay, no problem. And then when you're finished with it, Java will figure out that you're finished with it, and it'll clean it up for you. In C, you have to allocate memory, create your object. When you're finished with it, you have to delete your object and deallocate the memory. If you don't, your program has what's called a memory leak. And then that person's computer is not going to be very happy. It'll run out of memory, and boom! Your computer will crash. So that's another reason why Java is popular. It's a little safer. Now, you can still cause crashes with Java. It's just a lot harder to do. Um, and usually, they'll crash the JVM. They won't crash the whole computer. And the JVM just starts up whenever you run the program anyway. So if the JVM explodes, eh, whatever, who cares? The JVM exploded. Run the program again. Um, other other things? Uh, oh, uh, any, were any of you people at the uh, programming crash course we did last week? Yeah, that's right. You were there. Did you come too? Yeah. Um, you remember processing, what we were using to write in? That's built on top of Java. <laughs> so technically, you are writing Java already. So um, when we go through some of these things, it'll be very familiar to you. Um, so basically, you can do lots of shit with Java. But yeah. Um, and oh, right. So that's what you can do with Java. And then what we're going to be covering. So this week, we covered what is Java, getting Java set up on your computer, and running your first program. Next week, we'll cover variables and methods, basically creating and storing data, and then taking actions with that data. We'll cover the different types of data, like integer, float, long. These are all different types of numbers. Things like string, which is text, like we covered a little bit already. And then things we can do with those, like add to them, subtract from them, change your text to uppercase or lowercase, things like that. Um, after that, we'll cover conditions and loops. Conditions are things like, if this is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. Uh, and loops are how you can do things over and over again. So remember earlier how I did the taking all of the arguments and printing them on each line? That was a loop. We'll cover that. Um, once we've gotten to that point, to kind of flex our muscles and show off what we've learned, we'll build a calculator. Um, a text calculator, because graphics are very complicated. Um, but we'll build a text calculator. Uh, then we'll go into collections, which we kind of covered already a little bit. Um, and then we'll get into the real stuff, the real Java program stuff. Everything up into this, all of this stuff is more just basic programming. These would be skills you'd be able to carry over to almost any other language. Okay, A loop in Java is not that different from a loop in Python, Ruby, Go, C, C++. They're all somewhat similar. They look a little different, but they behave very similarly. Um, then we'll cover objects. Now we're getting into the stuff really specific to Java. Uh, we'll also, at this point, we'll start using an integrated development environment. You've been hearing uh, Eclipse a lot. Eclipse is one of these. It's basically this big, giant program that makes it really easy for you to write code. Um, then we'll cover basically more complicated things about objects. And then uh, the last class, I wrote a simple text adventure game. And in this, what we'll do is we'll take that game, I'll have cut a few pieces out of it, and you'll basically finish that game. We're going to use all of the principles that we've learned and use them in creating a text game. And that way you can have a text game that you can show off to your friends. Uh, and then at that point, I think we'll have covered most of the important things. And at that point, I would say you graduated to the intermediate level. Okay? This would be all of the basic programming stuff. This would allow you to write a basic Java application. It wouldn't be super fancy, but it would be a valid application. You could do some interesting things with it. Uh, when we get into intermediate, we'll cover things like, hey, I want to make a more interesting project. So I need a library to do something like display things on the screen or start a web server, or make it a connection to a game client or something, right? We'll cover these sorts of things. And, oh, maybe I want to pull in this library. Well, we can do dependency management. And we'll interact with databases, and we'll know how to do web servers. And those are the sorts of things we'll cover in intermediate. And that's when you can 
That's when you'll learn the skills that will take you towards getting a job, if that's what you're shooting for. Again, not guaranteeing, but it will start building your skills towards that. Um, and the last thing I want to leave off with is um, maybe not quite yet, but once we cover the basic programming principles, you'll want to start working on projects. You'll hear that many software developers have some side project, or more likely 10. <laughs> Because they're doing side projects to learn new technologies, to practice, um, to learn new problem spaces, to practice their skills. Um, like I have about five projects. All but one are on ice right now. Um, and that's, that's just how I make sure that I'm keeping up to date on my knowledge and things like that. And when you have side projects, and if you put them on GitHub, which we'll cover at some point, um, you can show that to an employer. You're like, hey, look at all these projects I built. I've shown you I can build things. You should let me build things for you. So there you go. Um, any questions before we call it a day? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Full stack. Okay. So, why did I... <laughs> so you have a website. Okay. This is a browser. You have some content, maybe some images, right? This is a bunch of code. This is HTML. This is CSS. This is JavaScript. Okay? This is a full-fledged programming languages. These are markup. Okay? But a full-stack developer knows these. Um, so these are all things that a full stack developer would know. Now, this website doesn't just appear out of thin air. This website doesn't just appear out of thin air. There's some web server, web application server, um, that's creating this page and is sending it to your browser, right? So this could be Java or PHP or Ruby or Python or this could also be JavaScript, or Go, or there's a whole bunch of languages that can do this. C++ even, but oh god, please no. Uh, so that's another step. Then, you still have the database. This is likely SQL. Or it could be Mongo. Or it could be, it could be Redis. Actually, what's more likely is you also have a Redis cluster. What's the symbol for a cache? Whatever, we're going to use a database. Um, likely this is Redis for your sessions, right? So, like, this is full stack. Yes. Yes. Now, here's the thing about full stack. Chances with full stack, uh, a full stack person is a generalist, right? They know how to accomplish many tasks in all of these languages, right? Usually only one or two of these. But these, they know. They know one or more of these, and they likely have some idea of this. Uh, if it's a small application, maybe not, because this is only needed for much larger applications. Um, but if you ask them to do something really complicated in one of these languages, they might have some trouble. They could probably figure it out, but it might take them a little longer than someone who just does this for a living. Right? So, like, I'm, I'm a Java developer. But I'm, I would call it full stack capable, right? Like, I could do this, and I could do this, but it'd take me a long time. Like, I know HTML, I know CSS, and I know JavaScript. I don't know all the fancy new tools for this stuff, but I know how HTML works, I know how CSS works, I know how JavaScript works, and I could figure out the, the specific pieces pretty quickly, right? And then databases, well, honestly, if you're doing backend, you know databases, you have to. This, uh, this is backend. This is back end, this is front end. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, that's full stack. I'm closer to a backend developer. I can do a little bit of front end, but it would take me a while. I'd be slow. You would you would probably get you would probably have a more effective use of your money if you were paying someone to do it if you had someone else build the front end. Yeah. So I I, I call myself a back end developer. I also hate doing front end. I don't like it. I don't find it fun. There's some people who love it. More power to them. I love that they can do it and I don't have to. Uh, but yeah. Uh, designers are not necessarily developers. They could be separate. They could be one person. It depends. And also the terminology is confusing sometimes. Because sometimes a designer can do these. Sometimes a designer can do none of this. Sometimes a designer can do all of this. The terms aren't very clean. Yeah. So complicated. Uh, this is actually my first job where my title is software engineer. And I've only been working at this job uh, since January. But I've been writing code for my job uh, since I graduated in 2011. So, And I've been writing code since I, uh, middle of college. So I say about, uh, I can't count, what, what would that, middle of college would have been what, 2009? So what, eight years? Nine years, because I started at the beginning of that year. Yeah. Because um, I'm a session admin, mm. college. Mm. So I was thinking, so um, I was wondering if I could do like a super expert like engineer thing. You can. You can do it. You can do it sooner. Uh, it, it's a. It's a. Now, I was a terrible student. I was a horrible, horrible, horrible student. I played way too many video games. Okay. Um, but I've met. I've met some college students who could code circles around me. Like, it, it's just a matter of how much it interests you and how much time you spend on it. Well, how much time you spend on it is a function of how much it interests you. So really, it's how much it interests you versus your other priorities in life. So, yeah. Um, oh, 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 other things. So I mentioned, like, this is, all, this is stuff you can do with Java, but there's also, if you've heard of big data, right? Big data often uses a system called Hadoop. That's written in Java. It also uses a system called Elasticsearch. That's written in Java. They also use a queuing system called Kafka. That's written in Java. There's a bunch of Java shit. Sorry, that just popped in my head because that's the really cool stuff. Uh, so technically, most of my experience is in data engineering. So that's Hadoop, Kafka, Elasticsearch, these sorts of things. So that's why, yeah, that stuff excites me. Google, Google uses, Google like Riot uses a whole bunch of stuff. Um, they use Java, C, C++, Go, Dart, because they wrote those two languages. Um, I doubt they have any PHP, but they might. Um, they probably have some Ruby and Python somewhere in there. Probably. Not in one project. No, 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 no. Usually one project has one main language. Unless it spans multiple portions of the stack and then you know, do what you need. But uh, oftentimes you'll have different services written in whatever language, and they communicate with each other via a protocol that's not language specific, like REST is a non-language specific protocol. Um, like a Java program can interact via, via REST with a PHP program, with a Ruby, doesn't matter. All of them can do REST. Well, I'm not saying that properly. Uh, they use JSON over HTTP as their communication method. Um, and usually people call that REST. REST is a little more complicated than that. But usually when you hear REST, that's the common way that people talk to each other, or that services talk to each other. Uh, REST you can look up online. Um, I recommend looking, if you if you are interested in REST and things like that, uh, look up beginner REST, because if you try to look up like academic REST, they'll go into all of the like math theory behind it, which, what? No. So. Other questions? Yeah, as, as, as soon as we're done here and I hit the stop record button, I'm uploading this to YouTube. And then I'm going to comment on the meetup page uh, and the Facebook event and the on-off mix page with a link to it, and I'll put it in Slack. And then I'll take this code we wrote 
And I'll also put it on GitHub, and I'll put the link for that too. So yeah. Um, if you have any other questions after we leave this room, you can catch me on Slack. Um, my name on Slack is... Holy crap, too many applications. Uh, I am the beach. Um, so you can find me on there. You can also, on the right side here, so you may not see it, if you click this button here, show channel details, and then you can do members, you'll see right here, that's me. Wearing a hat. I always wear a hat. Because it's easy to recognize, and yeah. You can just click my name, and then you can say, direct message. Oh, that's not English. And they, there we go. I received a message. But you get the idea. Um, I use it on mobile most often. But yeah, you can do both. Um, for me, this is the easiest way to get in touch. If, if you want my cacao or Facebook or anything, just ask me. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for coming, everyone. Yeah. See you next time.